Constituent Council on Aging Board of Directors meeting. Today is August 8, 2012, and it is 6.03. Calling the meeting to order. Can we have an introduction of the board, please? Sorry. Richard Mitchell. Jim Harmon. Dale Baylog. Joan Powers. Pam Davis. Lawrence Cho. Audrey Reedy. Rocky Carabas. Meg Stillman. Thank you. Um, the election of the officers for 2012-2013. Uh, we can either go ahead with that or we can wait until next month when the whole board is here. Would you have a preference? Wait for the board. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's another month? Yeah. Better day. <laughs> <laughs> better day all day. Yeah. Everybody was better yeah, show up. Next month. Not told, you know. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we're gonna postpone the election of the officers to the September meeting. Um, the July eleventh meeting minutes. Yeah. Everybody would take a look at them if you've already read them. That's terrific. Um, if everybody has read them, then we can. Uh, 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 here's the uh, July 13, both of the regular lives threat people, the full board is present. This is, no, July 11, 2012. Did you get that? That's the second. Oh, this must be all uh, for say, all right. Okay. I think we I just, get, I get we June handed 20, up, June we handed 2012. Oh boy. June 11 of 2012 is the one that you want to approve. All right. Because okay. the packet. This, this has one, one. Yeah. Me the, the, packet. Packet. the ones that were sent to you, 2012. Ones. Yeah. Okay. Have you got those? Yep. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. That happens. What noodles? The only change that I made when I sent it out to you is on page two, under old business, the sentence that says, Patty Butler of the Housing Authority is adamant about getting the swap through. She was adamant about getting the swap on the agenda because they had not talked about it. So I crossed out through and read. It's supposed to be on the agenda. On page two, item four, old business. Okay, just take a look at this. It's the same thing that you would email. Okay? Yeah. And, and the only correct. thing I changed is on the second page under old business talking about Patty Butler. And I just crossed out the word through and like the fourth sentence down. And she was going to get the topic of the property swap that we've talked about with John, uh, and maybe being able to put a council on aging building in the midst of affordable housing. She was talking about getting it on the agenda because they had been tied up with other things and not able to discuss it since we met last April, I think it was. So that's on their agenda that we discuss. That was the only change I made in that from last day. So. Can I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Minutes are accepted. The staff and direct reports. Okay. These are all right day. <laughs> <laughs> July was a uh, quiet month. A lot of our seniors are on vacation in July. Um, and August is upon us. August is probably the, one of the worst months uh, in terms of paperwork. We have a yearly report that has to be completed by the 24th of uh, August for the state. And that is very comprehensive. Uh, we thank God for the new, for the, uh, uh, the software that we have because it helps a lot. Um, and uh, I mean, it goes into all kinds of things. How many volunteers? What's the you know, what's the rate of pay that a volunteer uh, we would have to pay to have the same uh, services done? It's 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 a bureaucratic, um, and it's just uh, a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of reporting. Um, the formula grant was successful, and we have additional monies to spend this year all of the MCOA's lobbying, and that was really an enormous effort. All, all of the, the Council on Agents were very, very involved with this. 
It doesn't sound like a lot. Um, I mean, we're only get, we're getting seven dollars per senior instead of six twenty-five or four. Um, six twenty-five. There are four thousand three hundred and thirty-four seniors registered according to the two thousand and ten census. Now that's the figure that they go by the last fiscal um, census, which is our our census has gone up since then. But they do not they don't take that into consideration. So for ten years we will live with that figure, and there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, yeah. Uh, sometimes an MCOA makes up because they've, they've had a big drop in population and sometimes there's a big increase and, and they suffer the consequences, but for whatever reason, that's how the state figures. GATRA is having an informational session at the Situate Harbor Community Building on August 21st. It will take place from 10.30 until 12. Posters and flyers are ready and we will ask volunteers to hang them around town. I will ask Joe to notify the churches and the schools email, uh, and if the school email is active, Meg, would you know that? See if we can put it on that. In the meantime, it will go to the Mariner, the Ledger, and the Globe, along with the program on prescription drugs that we are sharing with FACS. We also have posters ready to go on that. It will take place on Monday the 20th at 7 p.m. That's the, um, the prescription uh, drug uh, presentation, which is talking to both seniors and, and actually the whole community about uh, being more vigilant about what they do with the rest of their prescription if they, if they don't use them. Um, it's become difficult because uh, at one point we just flushed them and now no one can do that or is supposed to do that. So people have um, some very lethal drugs, especially seniors, because they're the ones that have the hip operations and the knee replacements and, and um, you know, um, things that they end up with a very, very heavy um, form of drug uh, to ease the pain. So, and they're the drugs that are the most valuable in the community, the Oxy, the Percocet, drugs like that. And um, drug seeking kids is what we are targeting. We're, you know, are, are um, in this, in the South Shore, we're finding that that is the biggest problem among drug users for juveniles is, and for adolescents, is prescription drugs. And uh, that's, that's how they get a lot of them, what they don't buy on the street. They get from mom's prescription, mom's medicine cabinet, dad's medicine cabinet or grandma's medicine cabinet. So the idea of that presentation is to alert the community that we have a problem. And that's one way that we can do something to prevent some of the things that are happening. Um, we're getting ready to put our newsletter together. Hopefully we will have all the information needed for the new programs. Um, that's becoming difficult because now we have to identify what's down at the, at, at the harbor community building, what's here, and then um, right now the fall programs that are coming on board, we're having to see if we can contact them to make sure that, you know, if they want to go to the harbor or if they want to come here, um, and uh, that's all got to be in the newsletter. So the newsletter may be a little late because we just are having <coughs> trouble reaching everybody. Um, all of our volunteers and others across Situate have been so generous with your time and gifts and words of encouragement. It is so special to see intergenerational groups working together for a common goal. Thanks so much. This is what a community is all about. One of the things that has, and I think I told you once that we're working very hard on the legacy, and that is really starting to pay off. Um, you know, we're having more and more families who are remembering their loved one um, through donation to the Council on Aging, and um, which is, you know, what my goal was to begin in not just the donations, but also legacy, because legacy usually is more valuable and sometimes it's a yearly gift, you know, in remembrance. So uh, um, that's going very well, and we're very pleased about that. And it's really a compliment to to the staff and to the board and to everyone who works at the Council on Aging. The level of respect that we have generated is very, very high, and uh, and it's everybody 
working together that has promoted uh, that. Uh, programs for the board meet uh, for um, our, for July. Um, we're wrapping up Jill and I getting ready for the fall programs. And as I already told you, we have put them in two categories. Uh, some of them are now going to extend now that we um, our cardio is going to do two. Our yoga and chair yoga are going to expand and do two instead of one. Um, and we're going to have a group that is learning to speak Italian. And we will once again become, uh, begin our memoir writing taught by Dale Bay Baylog. Three programs that have to stay at the center because of the lack of resources are the um, art program, the arthritis program, and, um, and uh, uh, the, uh, now the knitting. Knitting is now back at the center. Um, they were, um, uh, they had voted to be back at the center. They, uh, they just feel very isolated down there, so they asked to come back here. Um, and I'm not going to tell a senior they can't go back to their home. Does anyone know of anyone interested in selling a wheel? Because we're interested in perhaps doing some pottery, as oh. well as the app. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> pottery <laughs> wheel that you throw pottery. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, if anyone knows of somebody interested in selling a wheel, uh, would you get in touch with me because that's something we would like to 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 do. To, to, we'd like to expand the arts program as much as we can. Unfortunately, we can't do any arts programs at the Harbor Community Building because there's no water, mm -hmm. there is no place to do it, there's no cleanup. So that building, in terms of anything like that, crafts or arts, is not usable. And I would I prefer anyway staying here. Just because with the memoir writing class, because of the floppy machine and uh, yeah. the teapot. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about the little, uh, is it the little House of Arts or something right on Front Street? I wonder if she would be open to facilitating. I'm not facilitating, you have your, but it would be a great space. Oh, a potter, you mean, yeah. Because uh, I think she, I think she's got wheels yeah. and, yeah. you know, can deal oh, with the mess. Yeah, and, that would be great to look into. So I don't, I don't, you know, she does it as a business. Yeah. Mm, but yeah. maybe she would be open to having, you know, on class of hours. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we can see. Yeah. Maybe she'd lend us a wheel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm serious. You know, yeah, she, she has some old wheel that she doesn't use right now. Okay, um, the men's breakfast will be, continue to be there, be, as will any cooking class or nutrition programs, as we have to have access to the kitchen. We will use the Situate Harbor Community Building as much as we can, and we're most appreciative it is available to us. Anyone who knows anyone who can teach ballroom dancing or a history of early America, please get back to me. We have the 4th of July party at the Situate Harbor Community Building on July 10th and, and we stopped it at 50 because that was the number of seniors who, who can fit given the number of tables and chairs. It wasn't the size of the place, it was uh, they just had enough chairs and enough tables for 50 people so we, were, well, we held it at 50. Uh, the seniors had a wonderful time and were thrilled with the view and the room uh, to stretch out. Our entertainer was terrific and a good time was had by all. The silent chef outdid themselves with a great menu so everyone was happy. We're very pleased with the silent chef. They're very competitive in price and they've done a really good job and we don't have any kind of glitzes with them, you know, so, um, and they're a local um, business so, you know, that's good that we're able to um, to use them. Food was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So very good two. time, by the way. Yeah. Was it like that time? And uh, <clears throat> you have to thank Florence and the committee that put it up. Worked hard. Worked hard. And it, it, it turned out to be a very, very nice day. And uh, Mr. Harmon did a little Irish tune here. Yes, we enjoyed your. You know, if anybody wants me to show up at a wedding or somebody's birthday, I'd be more than happy to do that. You don't charge much, do you? The price is right. That's right. Huh? Oh, I can tell you. Is the AC on? I don't know. You want to check it? Oh, I don't know. I just opened the door. 
to get some air. Yeah, I think maybe with the yeah screen. Yeah, yeah. Anyone gets uh, impeached. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Well, anyone gets hot or cold? Yeah, I apologize for this. What happened was we didn't communication is a wonderful thing. Somebody got the calendar from the the community from the recreation, and we love working with rec. And um, it had these two dates on it, and we weren't aware until after it was published in the book, so we couldn't. It was just too late to um, to have it changed. So we're kind of. That's why we need a bigger center. <laughs> right more room though. and more facilities, <laughs> and all you see is get out there and push for it. Um, okay, um, the transportation, um, the daily rides were 492, uh, the link was 82, the map is, uh, we didn't use the map, volunteers, we had 18 volunteers driving. We had a uh, total of 592 rides, which is a lot considering we had some hot days in July. Uh, the total volunteer hours were uh, three, 39 uh, and a half, um, 18 and a half were vans, 739 and a half were private, and zero escort this month. The total miles driven by our vans were 1,265. One of the things that we are going to have, we are having a problem with, is the link. The link is um, a pro uh, we are uh, uh, the only COA in the South Shore that's able to provide this service. Um, a many, a uh, few years ago, uh, I think it was about seven or eight years ago, um, the then town administrator uh, and the board voted to give the um, the COA money to transport seniors out of town. And in doing that, we made, uh, we, we signed a contract with South Shore Community Action and seniors are, were able to be transported out of town. The only thing is it's very, very, very costly. Um, if it's a wheelchair, it's $40 more if somebody has to go into a wheelchair. A ride to Boston and back is $84. No coverage? No coverage. No, and so uh, what has happened is, and what sometimes happens is, we get an over, we have, uh, our money was cut this year. We were cut $2,000 for the lake, and we now have a budget of 1800 a month. Well, we have so many people either on chemo or on, which means two or three rides a week, or dialysis, that our budget for those people, and there's eight of them, is $1,359. <laughs> so it leaves us with, you know, a little over $400. Should anyone else need to go to Mass General or need to go to uh, Plymouth for cataract surgery or need to do anything like that, we just cannot, we won't be able to accommodate them. One of the things that we are looking at is um, we do not charge for these rides. We ask for a donation. And we may have to start uh, putting a fee on, on these rides because otherwise it's, it's, you know, we can't turn down life-giving services. I mean, they have to come first. But we'll be denying, and we did today, three people really called, and we had to say no. We have expended our budget. For, for already for August, it's already done. So we have to. Um, so we have to find a way in order to, um, you know, to, to uh, get some more m uh, monies. And uh, a lot of like the map is a, a five program, a five town program. And that that is the, they request a donation of at least twenty five dollars for that one. And that's not ours, that's a five-town program. Um, and we, up to now, we have been, you know, somebody will maybe give us a $25 check, uh, but when you have someone in dialysis for two years, and it's two or three times a week, that's an enormous amount of expenditures that we're using, and we really, I, I'm, you know, we really, um, 
want to take this on and, and, and be able to expand it, I would appreciate anyone on the board who wants to get involved with that to help us, uh, you know, decide how to do this because we're not getting any more money. So, where the, what are other towns doing? They don't do it. They don't do anything. They don't do anything. People. They, if they have the right, yeah. like Kingdom does and Cohasa does, the right takes them. Yeah. But no, every town does not have the right. Uh, Hanover doesn't have the right. Mm. Um, a lot of towns don't have it. So if there's no MBTA, they don't have the right. Would Gatford just be local then? Gatford will be local. It won't, it won't be, and it will be regional in terms of that's the plan too. But not to Boston, not to Plymouth, and not do, to Brockton. Do they do more volunteer? No, no. We do more, the, the only town that is um, ahead of us in the whole South Shore in terms of van rides is um, Weymouth. No, but do they do volunteer? No. no. They do some, but very little. They, they, I mean, they never generate the numbers we do, ever. And they never have. And this is something that's been ongoing for the past, I believe, eight years. Because I remember uh, meeting a woman at uh, the cancer center, and, and she would come for radiation every day and have uh, um, a woman brought her. Well, that can right, that, that can be ball. from the cancer set. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, I I thought thought it was through the yeah. senior, it's within the cancer society. Well, we is. do. Oh, with, so yeah. then sometimes you can steer them in that direction. Yeah, but you know, it's like everything else. Yeah. The, the dialysis. Do they have no. anything like no. that? No, no. I no. find that so hard to believe that that association, the kidney foundation, there aren't any resources. There aren't any. We have people have to go through. So there's got to be some way. Well, the Kidney Transplant Dialysis Association has is is a nonprofit, and they offer funding to people from donations when a per, when an individual cannot meet their utility bills or perhaps a transportation bill, but they don't offer transportation across the board. Gotcha. Yeah. So, there are right now. Most of these big hospitals have satellite places that are closely going into Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it depends. I mean, you've got Dana Farber, that's Weymouth. Yeah, yeah. So if someone's going for chemo in Dana Farber, yeah. they're going to Weymouth, that's which is it. out of our which it, is out of our jurisdiction. Yeah. And if we're using community action council, that's a thirty two dollar ride. Yeah. Just for that. And so it's you know, it's it's not cheap when you have to go and get and have a vendor, That's and you you have to pay more for it. And as I said, they went up this year, so we're just struggling to figure out how we can continue this as best we can because it could end up that the only ones that are going to get this are going to be the people on chemo and, and dialysis. Period. Well, that's where our and and our volunteers won't go to Boston. They won't go to Boston, they won't go to Brockton. I don't blame them because he's just trying no, to No, they won't. They the absolutely conditions. won't. Well, you right. stop and think of it. If they're taking someone in for a dialysis, that's a two hours. Well, and they have to wait, yeah. sometimes three hours. So if you're taking someone for chemo, then you're parking, you're waiting. You know, that's asking a lot, and especially when you're asking someone to do it two or three times a week. I well, mean, that's anything. where our town fathers fell asleep with not having a ride in this, in this, in this town. We have the T, which is, my, in my estimation, is uh, a, a, a white elephant. We have no service on weekends anymore. And at least we should have had the ride for other people in this town uh, that need the ride. Well, I don't think they were allowed. They tried to get the ride. I don't think they tried how to win. Well, I don't know. I wasn't here uh, then, so I couldn't tell you. I, I know I tried. tried. I think they tried and hard to not get it. Because we could have had it instead of uh, yeah. a few of the other things. Yeah. And it's too bad. And uh, uh, yeah. I, I have nothing else to say except uh, they uh, fell asleep to the switch uh, by not having the ride in this town, yeah. which would help. The elderly people in this town, we have 5,000 elderly people in this town that are being pushed aside. Uh, you know, we're like Indians, we'll put, they're going to put us on a, uh, 
a raft instead of, of the sea and guy. No, it's not yet. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Well, yes, it is. No, it's not. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't go back. No, we've got to go forward. This is what happens. We're trying to go forward. We're like, hey, Well, I'd just like to offer, um, you know, the fact that I had uh, many medical problems, and um, I was fortunate enough because at the time I was a resident of Boston, and I did have the advantage of the ride. But that was not always the case because sometimes I had medical appointments that I could not depend on to schedule with the ride. They still have to be. So um, I would pay a taxi if I had to have an emergency CAT scan, but it wasn't warranting an ambulance ride, I would pay the taxi bill. But we don't have a taxi. No, no, but, yeah. no, but I'm, leading up to the fact, I'm leading up to the fact that I think that there are some people, if you set a nominal fee, a scaled fee. So I think that charging people who can afford a nominal fee, I don't mean that, you know, not to make a huge profit, but to meet, to meet the budget needs. Right. I think they would pay it if they could. I think that's what she's talking about. Yeah, that's well, I know, but I know she has, right asking, she has her right. opinion, if, but to offer her suggestions. Yeah. Well, she's I looking think for volunteers to set up some sort of a yes. system. Yeah, but and that's really, and I mean, I'm very, we are very grateful and very appreciative because we were, as I said, the only town on the South Shore that had that resource. So, I mean, there wasn't any other town that, that, that had that resource. So we, we're lucky that the town gave it to us. And, you know, to be fair, they couldn't foresee that this was going to grow the way it grew. And now they're short of money, and everyone's short of money. So. You know, we have to start, we have to think out of the box and, um, being, you know, and that's why we, we look for donations because if there are hard, uh, hardships, then we can meet that hardship. And, you know, fortunately our emergency fund for seniors has been very well um, received and, and we've been able to help a lot of seniors out of some really difficult times. So this isn't really a criticism of, of the fact that there is no, the money was cut. This is a, 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 a this is just a logistical problem. A logistical yeah. problem, and does anyone have any ideas about how best to go through this? So I just want to make that statement. I think we need maybe a couple of people on the board that yeah. will sit down with you yeah. and we'll figure out a, a suggested way to get. Right. A fee, a fee program right. up and working, right? And like Dale said, maybe scale it to yeah. income or right. Yeah. Well, we, if somebody can't afford it, they can't afford right. it, and that would be we would have to find another way. But if we have to take, you know, um, use all of the gift accounts for 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 the ride, I mean, for the lake, we wouldn't have anything for other emergencies as well. So. Right. We've got to be, you know, like everybody else, we're watching our budget. And, um, you know, it's um, it's particularly hard on some of our seniors who don't have the income. But anyhow, that was the uh, intent of that, okay. and I, I didn't mean to get people off the track. Do you want us to, I'll help you with okay. that. Does anybody else want to pitch in? I'll help. Dale? All right, Dale, yeah. I'll help. Right. And right. And if we need some more help, we'll let you know. All right. All right, All right. Uh, the outreach workers, um, monthly report was home visits to office visits uh, at the council on aging were 32 meetings or events attended were two telephone calls are uh, were 55 referrals made uh, that means you know finding resources were 27 duplicated numbers were 96 and people who came in for the first time were 49 um, this month, outreach host of the care group uh, give a support group meeting at the Situate uh, Community Building. The support group is helping to grow with the additional space of the community building where we can ac accommodate the caregivers' loved one with the help of volunteers. Um, that was this uh, next Wednesday is this is the second time we will be doing that. Our intent with that was um, a lot of caregivers who are taking care of people 24-7 cannot get out at, because, to come to support groups that are very important 
because they do not have access to anyone who's going to come in and watch the loved one. So what we're hoping now that we have the, the Harbor Community Building to use is that um, we can set up two rooms, one for the caregivers uh, group, uh, the support group, and one for their loved ones and um, to have some activities and to have um, so that they'll the, the other per, the person that's with them as Dale can attest can attend the meeting and um, you know maybe get something out of it because it's really important to be able to talk to someone who's going through what you're going through and uh, so we're very we're very appreciative that we have that extra space in order to do that have you got the extra people I mean to be yeah. down there yeah you do yeah Right now, all we need is a, it's a case by case basis, and I don't want to inundate it with volunteers. And we've got two volunteers right now, but we only last month had one person. So, okay. you know, I have to see how this is going to um, how it's going to work out in terms of numbers. If this picks up a lot more um, in terms of numbers, then we will expand the volunteers and we'll expand the. Um, um, the resources that we use right now, we, we're, use, we're giving them a light lunch, and um, and last month it worked out very well. We, our volunteer was Dale, and she had a really good time. I had a great time. I hope that <laughs> the gentleman had, did too. I think he did, but I had a great time. So, so we're really we're really excited about doing it. It's the only support group right now on the South Shore that's doing that. So, we're hoping that more people are going to be able to come out and get out and, uh, you know, share their thoughts and feelings. Okay, and that's all right. Yes. They're an adult um, like daycare or that kind of thing in situation open? Um, no, that's oh, closed. Oh, closed. Oh, closed. Hamilton Daycare was at the St. Luke's um, Church, and it, uh, it's a different thing. This is a, med that's a medical model where a daycare for, um, which I think the only people who run one right now are, is du uh, Duxbury. But um, they do have, which I would love to do, but we're never gonna be, we, we can't do it here, is um, some of the COAs run daycares two, three, four days a week for um, seniors who come in and they have the day to themselves. The medical model is generally paid by insurance yes. or it's cash. But it's closed. But it's closed, it's closed. and there has to be, I was just there has to be a nurse on duty, there, there, there has to be a lot of, there's a lot of things that you have to set up and um, really, we're not equipped for that right now. And I was just thinking it would be a good group. No, and I really don't want to be equipped for it. And um, it's, it's really, it's very difficult. You, you've got a lot of liability there. I started one. Yeah. When I got a graduate school, that was yeah. the first job. Mm -hmm. They opened up an adult day about things in Baptist Hall of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And was that in Sidswood? No. Kingston. Oh, Kingston. Yeah. So, anyway, so we're, you know, any little inroads that we can make, caregivers are very, very important to me. I was a caregiver for 11 years, and I know what it's like. So, you know, I know how important it is. Okay. Any have anybody have any more questions for us? All right, old business. Gatra update for the senior center. Gatra program. When is that gonna be up and running? When are you gonna be working? Well first we're we're meeting on the fifteenth of um, of August okay. to, over in Hanover to um, with the Gatra. Uh, finance people to discuss billing and how we're going to bill out and because it, what it is is you it's like any federal program you spend the money and then you build them for the money so you okay. know and that's so but it's got to be set up um, and um, you know we're running a, a very little will change initially because Initially, what we will run will be the senior program, and that's already set up, and we're doing, you know, over six thousand rides a year. So, that's gonna uh, that's gonna stay the same. The only thing is that the time will be reimbursed um, for those services, um, which they're not right now. It comes out of the town's budget. 
Um, do you think we should mention to people out there listening all about CAFRA, public information meeting? You'll see these posters around now. Tuesday, August 21st at 10.30 to 12 noon at the Central Harbor Community Building. So anybody with questions, this is the place to go. Yeah. No, I did it. I, uh, Teresa did it. Yeah. Teresa was a graphic person. Very nice. She did a beautiful Very job. Nice. Yeah. When it will start, what the routes will be, what the fares will be. So all of the so the selectmen have a decided what the routes will be. Uh, the selectmen really, I mean, what has happened is there's a certain amount of money right now that's available. And um, so, as you all know, or if you don't know, this is not costing the town anything. This is money that is coming from the cherry sheet, that is um, MBTA money that the town pays and has been paying every year. And um, what, they, what we're doing with that is GATRA, using GATRA, we're just transferring that line over to transportation services. So for the first um, $116,000, I believe, or $114,000, that is money that we, we would be paying and we would be receiving nothing for, no services for, but we, we pay every year. So that's a win. Um, the other thing is GATRA is um, federally and state funded. And what the whole goal is is to uh, to bring regional transportation into towns like Situate and other towns and in rural communities um, that because the MBTA does not cover the whole state. And people, believe it or not, don't all have cars. I mean, and um, there is no taxi in Situate. There is no other form of transportation. If you want to go to the, t uh, to the train, and you can't be back, uh, I mean, you have no way of getting up there, or you have no way of getting back. If you're a senior, we can get you up there, but we can't get you back. So this is, you know, uh, there will be routes. Uh, Marshfield has extended theirs. Marshfield has been uh, successful with this. Duxbury has, now they're starting to link town to town. And the towns that we will be linking with, probably initially, that will be the goal will be Hanover, Pembroke, and Marshfield. And um, so it will be a greater area that you can, um, you know, you can go uh, with this. It's a minimal amount. It's uh, for, for the, ride, for the um, program. Some of, them, some of them have a wave the ride where if the bus is going down, down your street and you need to take the bus, you can wave and they'll stop and pick you up. Um, some of them have fixed routes, some of them have dial a ride. So um, most communities really, it's earmarked the way it works best for the community. They have a, certainly a vested interest in developing numbers because that's how they're funded and that's how it encourages the federal government and the state to put more money in it. So um, we're hoping it's going to get really used. Um, I'm going to go out of order on the uh, agenda for just one item. Um, Joan's going to have to leave at 7. If we're not finished with the meeting, then uh, Joan will be able to fulfill her slot, time slot. Was, did you have anything? I didn't go to the meeting, but I did get a note that uh, they have a committee that, that was going over uh, the food service for Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. And the committee had decided uh, we had three different groups. And they had, this, they had decided, but it had to be voted on, so I mean, it didn't vote on yet. But, uh, what was it about? Two different groups for the vendor? It's, or? it's for who they're going to cater for the South Shore LV services. Mm -hmm. And uh, after discussion with Nate and said, this is by the group, mm -hmm. they decided that the Lins, Linsley Food Service be awarded a three year contract for catering services to South Shore Elderly, effective October 1st, and it will be for three years. Okay. 
Okay, what will they do? They're just getting a different caterer for the caterers on this. What are they from, Joe? He, he doesn't say actually where they can take them out of here. What's the name of it? Lindsley. Lindsley, L I N D L E Y. They've never used them in the past? No, it's only from Bateman. And Bateman was one of the ones that considered, but they had a whole board that literally spent a lot of time on going through that. And then they recommended it to the board, and then the board votes on it. It was a combination. It was a combination. Yeah, they went over the, uh, the price, the, what the meal was like, how much it cost, what kind of meals they could buy. Really very, very detailed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, going back up to old business, recap of the field trip that we took on August 1st, last Wednesday. We went to. I'm John Bennett from WATD. Hi, John. I'm going to record some of this. You don't mind? Is that all right? Yeah. Um, we went to five different locations. And two, four different locations. Two of them were vacant pieces of property. One was on the driftway. Our, our reason for wanting to do this is because we've talked about different locations. There are newer members on the board that have never seen some of these locations that we talked about. And we hadn't been to one of them in particular. So we decided to do a field trip that would incorporate everything that we've talked about as a potential site for a new council on aging building. A uh, new brand spanking new one that would offer us all the stuff that we wanted for moving into another facility. Um, the two pieces of property that we looked at were uh, piece of property on the driftway that's owned by the Sidgwick Housing Authority. They actually own it. And the question that had been in the air was, are they actually going to build or could they do some kind of a property swap or some deal with the Affordable Housing Trust? And at one of our meetings, we talked about maybe having affordable housing for seniors with a new community center, a new senior center in the midst of it. You know, could we make that proposal work? And we looked at the property on the driftway. It's a beautiful location. It's close enough to the harbor that it's going to be advantageous to the seniors. It's easy to get it. It would be easy to get in and out of. So we liked it, and we're ready to go. Uh, the second one is the old property that we had on Branch Street, the property behind Central Housing and the library which now has the option, the library now has the option to use that property for their expansion. So in the event the expansion doesn't happen for whatever reason, we'd love to be back up considering that piece of property too. We have plans already and we're ready to go. The the fourth piece of property that we looked at, I'm going to get to Gates at the, at the end, was the Harbor Community Building. We went in there with a more critical eye. Last year when the property was first purchased by the town, we thought it would be a great move. And as much as we've talked about going there, I think the consensus on the board, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that if we're going to go into a new facility, be it gate school or brand new building. We want to go someplace where we can have as much room as we need to actually have all the programs that Florence wants the Council on Aging to provide. And we don't feel that the Harvard Community Building offers that. So we feel like we're going to steer our interests in other directions. Is that everybody's consensus? Yeah. You did a pretty good job so far. Oh, thanks, Richard. You can jump in anytime you want well, to. You know, to your, you know, the point about the uh, the driftway. Yeah. And I think we all agree. So that, that's a great oh, location. Perfect. Plenty of room. Yeah. And uh, easy to find. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can't think of any uh, shot. Uh, you know, something that's you know 
not good about it. No, from our standpoint. Yeah. Because the walking five, the walking yeah. down, That's right. the bike, uh, exactly. uh, everything right there, and uh, it's not that far, and it's uh, private, it's almost private. It's, uh, and in the winter time, you know, that road is well maintained. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not that all the roads are not, but right. that that is a necessary. Well, it's a main, it's a main, main road. Yeah, so that would be another asset, you know. Um, that's just, all we need is a little magic work where we can end up on that piece of property. Whatever kind of swap they can do. Could you? What is the, what is the address there? Where I don't is know. It? It's on the driftway. It's between the old driftway road that goes up to the Situa Country Club and the duplexes or the, the condexes, whatever they are. On the left hand side. It's not that far from the uh, hard hard. courts. No. What is the what is there? No. Seven no. acres of woods. Yeah. And it's owned by the housing authority. It's just beyond where Boston Sand and Gravel used to drag there the uh, gravel for the for the concrete years many years ago. Wow. Just beyond that. It's now the dump. But uh, yeah. But the, you know the town uh, the, the housing authority owns the property. If they're going to do something with it, it's you know they may already have plans that don't include us. Can we infringe upon them? It would take uh, the approval from the selectmen, and you probably have to get approval from the town. It would have to go before the uh, we would have to have a town meeting. But. It's a great location, you know, and it was suggested to us that we go take a look at it, so we did. I'm sorry, what's your name again? Pam Davis. Okay, thank you, Pam. Yeah. Um, just another question. Uh, there's been a lot of talk for quite a while about the Harvard Community Center. Mm -hmm. Gone before the selectmen had asked, asked them about that. Why is it now that you feel that that wouldn't work for you? Because of our preference. We have so many seniors in town, over 4,600, if I'm correct. That, and you're looking at a wave coming because of the baby boomers. We need something bigger than what is available at the Harbor Community Building. We can't access the second story, which is doesn't have a lot of square footage, but it has usable square footage. You'd have to put it in an elevator, two sets of stairs. It's very costly, so we don't have enough room to make, to build or to create the ideal senior center there. So, Pam, um, but as a band-aid, as an interim, um, are we still going to consider Pier 44 as opposed? I'm asking, you know. I, I, uh, are we going to consider still Pier 44 as an interim site location as opposed to waiting six to seven years for the gate school in the master plan? Because we have our definite preferences, but we have no, just we have no money yet for it, et cetera, et cetera. So, what are we going to do for six to seven years? Are we going to stay here, or are we still going to try to get the Pier 44 building just as a temporary? It's, it's, it's not, that's not our decision. The, the Board of Selectmen is making the decision on what Pier 44 is going to be. They've been presented with all the facts. Everybody's, dis everybody's discussed it ad nauseum as far as the answer. <laughs> No, but I I understand that. But yeah. are we with are we withdrawing our our no hope? No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. We just explore. Yeah. yeah. The key word is the explore. Okay. So, but I, to, to clarify, perhaps I'm wrong. I don't get the feeling that our first our second choice was Gates. No, I, I, well, we don't know that that's even going to be on the table if the yeah, master plan depends on the master plan. We are looking at all the options. Yeah. We mm -hmm. had some traveling yeah. through looking that's at right. auctions. That's all yeah. the traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Gates was not a selection. Well, it's, it's certainly a possibility because it's got the square footage. It's right. a question of 
how long is it going to be, be and how costly is it going to be? Yeah. Is the town, are the town's people going to be willing to foot the bill for remodeling gates? And, yeah, you know, that's, yeah. so that's totally unacceptable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, could, you couldn't fund the bill. No, I don't think anyone would argue that. But I, I think also, you know, until the master plan is done, or until it's presented, I think, you know, um, all the options where are all the options are, are mute, moot, really, because um, we don't have the, I guess, the authority to, and, and shouldn't have the authority to proceed without the selectmen, you know, being behind us. And so, and, um, and I think that they, they are going to propose, I don't know when, the master plan, but until that's presented and done, I don't think that any other options are going to be considered. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. I mean, you're going in one direction, you go in one direction. Which is good in our wheel. Yeah. Well, until, until they start making some, yeah. you know, concrete. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Six years, nine yeah. years. Yeah. 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 So I, I thought we've got kind of a short-term issue and a long-term issue. Right. Yes. <coughs> the sh the, 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 we were traveling to try to look at the long-term issue. The short-term yes. issue is sure, you know, get good space anywhere you can get it. Uh, still press, you know, for space at the community center or wherever. Um, but but longer term, you know, we looked at four options for now at least, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you, you didn't kind of get to the Gates School. But so, so my sense that the Gates School, you know, uh, with money, you know, anything's possible. Uh, the downside for the Gates School for me was um, the length of time that you'd need to wait to get something. So they were talking five plus years. Um, at least that's what the principal said. I, I, I know. I do think that that's it. You know, people are throwing out years, and I don't think. Unfortunately, I think we have to wait a year. I think. I don't know. Well, Nobody yeah, knows. I way. do. If I think like, it could be between a year and a, two years, and it could be oh, seven I, years. I think yeah. that's a very optimistic. Year. You know what, though? Okay. Uh, did you have you talked to the handle of them? I mean. It is amazing once things but started they to, have but they had a lot of, they didn't yeah. have as many well, but, yeah. but yeah. I'm just, I'm not fighting it. anybody, I'm just saying that I, yeah. it, that is such a huge question. If, if somebody really comes back and says, it's yeah. two years, I'll have a different impression about it. And, right. and the that's really said optimistic. Was five. Yeah, I don't know any differently. Uh, so I don't think I'd we say, know enough. I'd say the Gates School is kind of, you know, lower, lower on the list now. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the adjacent to the library isn't even feasible at the moment. Mm -hmm. right. Somebody else has dibs on the land. Uh, the Harbor Community Center, uh, yeah, the big issue there is the amount of available square footage. You'd still need to invest in it, uh, but the, your, the drawing you gave me that was done years ago for the property behind the library was for 11,000 square feet of usable space. Yeah, that was um, 2007. You've said you could probably do with 7,000 square yeah. feet of space, and the community center is less than that. It's 3,800, I believe, 38,000. So it's just, it's, uh, you know, yeah, it's is it better than this? Yes. Oh, you yeah. know, but is it what we want? No. 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 So then you're left with, you know, chasing the housing authority, okay. you know, opportunity, at least to the point where we figure out, you know, if that's feasible at this point, we barely know anything about it. Mm -hmm. We don't know no. whether they're building, what they're building, and when it's going to happen. Well, um, we, have, we are in limbo in terms of of what we can do. First of all, somebody came in today that is in the town, a person who's been here for years and years, a businessman, and one of the things that he had a lot of suggestions and, and, and they were certainly ones to consider. Uh, but the thing that still goes back to, first of all, we don't have any land. We don't have um, we don't have anything we can point to. 
I mean, when Cohasset or anyone is starting to build a school or whatever, they're saying we want to build a school and this is where it's going to be and this is what it's going to cost or this is when it's going to be done. We are in, in, in you know, we, we just in Neverland because we don't know what it's, you know, and, and no one knows, um, you know, what it's, what the capabilities are. We can't fundraise, we can't do anything until this master plan or whatever is done and then I don't know where that leaves us either. I mean it's you know that strictly you know we're at the mercy of the of the gods I guess I would say. And that's that's where we are. So we're not the captains of our own faith. We're not. But let's be excited that they're talking that they're yeah. talking about it and there's people that really are seem to be jumping on board. So well, that's a good thing. There are some committees that uh, want us to have a uh, building and a push for it. And uh, one of our town fathers said we wasted $250,000 years ago on the plans and they're just sitting there dead. Well, it's dead because uh, it came in high and, and uh, they didn't want to go for the money. So we had the building all, yeah. all ready yeah, to go. But it's it's passe, it's all yeah. passe, but yeah. don't say that we wasted, we can't afford to waste another $250,000. We have to get something for the seniors in this town. There, there's 5,000, oh, well, 4,500, and there'll be, by in uh, two years, there'll be 5,000. And these are the people that have built this town, and they deserve something better than this place here. They deserve, they deserve to have something where they can uh, come and enjoy themselves and, and, and have activities. This place here is a disgrace. Okay, where do you want to go? So, I mean, you know, we wanted to try to get together with uh, folks at the Housing Authority or Housing Trust or whatever it was. They've resolved their, they have. their big issues and now one of the things that they'll bring up at the next meeting, I would imagine, is going to be this. Okay. Probably Should we ask to attend? Yeah, um, yeah I can talk to Patty Butler and see. Yeah. yeah. Have they ever done a property swap that you know? No. It, it, I mean, this is their property. They, from my understanding, they want to build themselves. They have money. And they got plans, and it was postponed the, a long time ago. The swap idea, how it got started. It was, John Dennehy mentioned it. Oh, okay. That's what it was. It was an idea that he had, bringing the three groups together. And could we, is there some way we could facilitate a property swap between housing and affordable housing? And would even one of them consider plopping us in the middle of it? And, you know, it's a pipe dream. Yeah, but it was something that it sounded really good, and it still sounds good. So, why we might look at the property? Well, it's going back to that master plan, um, and, and uh, Meg being optimistic that it could take three years, hopefully. I, I'm just, I, we, nobody knows, no, 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 no. but but concretely now, and and PM too. How long would the paperwork end of it take? If the town, if the how long does it take to get on a town meeting? Um, well, you have to get on the warrant. Okay. And the only way you get on the warrant is to, uh, to to propose to 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 propose what you want to, to give it to the select, and then they can vote to put it on, and they can vote not to put it on. Um, so you know that's that's the process. That's how it goes. And uh, once it goes on into the town meeting, it goes for a vote, um, whether or not the, 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 the people that are there are going to vote for it to go on the ballot, which would have to go on the ballot. Anything that's above, spending above two and a half percent has to, by law, go on the ballot. So, you know, so, you know, that usually town meeting is, um, 
November, October, November. I think it's October this year. And then, then they'll do. Then, then they usually do the the uh, the voting around May, around the same time they do the election. So there's a year right there. Yeah. Historically, that. But you don't know. I mean, first of all, no one knows what. I mean, unless you're a mind reader, unless, and I mean, even they don't know. No one can be absolutely certain about time. They can't be. I mean, there are also, there are things that can work out. There are things, glitches, that you can all of a sudden decide, well, I'm going to build on this and I'm going to find some kind of spotted owl or something. And so that puts it back, and you have environmentalists that come in and say, no, no, you can't build. So. There are all kinds of hazards and things that so you know, that's really the best they can do is give you an estimate. I mean, you know, this is when it should be completed, but it doesn't mean it will be completed in terms of the same with when it will go up to a vote. It doesn't go up to a vote unless it goes on town meeting, it goes on town meeting if the warrant is granted and, and it's voted by the selectmen to allow it to go to town meeting. And all that is... So, so, but, the, but the master plan, though, the, the, the master plan... I don't plan know when that's going to town meeting. But, but, but so, what, so we are, that, that the warrant will be yeah. on... Yeah, I, I do not know what, whether that will be on the warrant in October. I don't know how far along they are with that. I mean, I'm trying to, to yeah, determine the I time. Mean, it could be a whole year from so, now that the master that is presented. It could they could have a special town meeting in May. It could be you know uh, they so have to, I, you, know, in you have to have your ducks in a row. You cannot present a bill or a town, a town meeting in Devil without a dollar behind that proposal. And in order to have a dollar behind that proposal, you have to do your work. You have to find out what your construction costs are, what the labor cost is, how much, what is the, what is the completed package going to look like to the best of your estimate. Or you're not going to get anyone to vote. You will not get somebody to vote on, a, on this, uh, an open-ended budget. So that has to happen. So. I don't know where they are in the time frame. I don't know how far they are, but that's a lot of work. I built that's three clinics. Work. I can tell you right I, now. I do think it's. It, I do think that a, a school is going to get presented, and I think a lot of that is going to be based on when that comes to fruition. So much of it. It's all tied together. It's all tied together. You've got to start with one. Yeah. Piece. And the other thing I do think that we should be thinking about as we're going forward is do we see that, you know, do we feel like we should really piggyback the staff school or should we try to be doing it independently, you know? And, and I think, I don't know the answer, but I do think something really should be Well, we have about. to know what our options are. Right, right now we have none. No idea. And we have no idea. There are no options out there. There are no what ifs because we don't. I mean, we don't have anything to start from. So until we get in that position where we have at least a vision, I mean, we have a vision. We know what we need. We know we need a new senior center. When we see the numbers of seniors that are increasing, uh, we send out surveys to people that turned 60 last year. We sent 272 of them that were turning 60 last year just in this town. So when you look at statistics like that, you know it's the largest growing population in the town. It's going to still increase. Are you ever going to serve every senior in the town? No, no, no. There isn't a count on aging. There isn't a building going that everyone's going to come into the senior center. Marshfield doesn't do it. No one does it because you just will never have. You'll have to have the Taj Mahal. But you do need a basic uh, operations for outreach, for transportation, for resources, for human services, because like it or not, the senior centers in these towns are the only human service building any, any of them have. And we do a lot more than just seniors in terms of human services and providing resources, and so do the other councils. 
So, I mean, and that's what you have, and you do have to have a good, steady base in order to do that work. If the town doesn't feel it's important and doesn't want it, there's nothing we can do about it. Well, from what I understand, the select men are going to have a presentation, their idea of what they want to do with if the community building in September. Oh, they are? That's what I understand. I'll talk to Patty Butler about when they're going to have their meeting and talk. Of, they'll talk about this and I'll let the board know. So there are two things that within the next two months we'll have those options nailed down as to whether there's a possibility we're going to get it or we're definitely not. We can't be a part of it for whatever reason. So I'm in a very strange position right now because I'm increasing the program. I'm increasing what we're doing because of the availability to the community center. If the community center goes, there is no room for a deal. It won't. All of those programs will be done. No room at the end. I'd like to ask about um, Oh, may uh, she contacted them? She contacted them. No, they said you no. Know, there would be no way. Be no way. Yeah. Yeah. Just one more question about the Harvard Community Center, mm -hmm. because this has been one of the major issues about the seniors wanting to have a senior center at the Harvard Community right. Center. Right. Now, I'm kind of confused because on the one hand you said that uh, you, you looked at these sites and you looked at the Harvard Community Center and you discovered that, that there was really not enough room to have a senior center there. Right. Yeah, uh, it's but not on the, the ideal location. It's not, it's not the, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that we want. Right. But on the other hand, uh, someone asked if you were abandoning the idea and you said no. So that's kind of, could you kind of clarify what that means? Well. Everything is on the table, nothing's been crossed off, but not everything that we looked at is going to give us everything that we want, except a brand new building. Does that make sense? So that, does that mean you will continue to try to just use, try to use the Harvard Community Center? Absolutely. For oh, some of your programs. That space. But, Absolutely. But you're giving up the idea of having a senior center there. No, we're not giving it up, but our preference is to have a big enough facility, if we can get it, to do everything in one location. We don't have enough space here. That doesn't have enough space. So we're more than happy to put whatever programs we can down there in order to be able to offer those programs to the people that use them. So does that mean you will continue to push for a senior center at the Harvard Community Center? Um, Temporarily. Yeah, temporarily. Yeah, temporarily. Yeah, but it's, you know, when you look at it with a critical eye, it's not everything that we want. And that's what we were looking for the other day. So, yeah, Does that so, make sense? Yeah, it, it makes more sense now. So, you will on a temporary basis. Yeah. Oh, we will. We'll be there in a flash. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to use it as absolutely as much as you can on a temporary absolutely. basis. Definitely. I mean, Pam, Pam best described it, I think, when she said, um, opening the uh, discussion, the issue, the long term and the short term. Yeah. So our little field trip was for the long term, um, but we did want to, to look at Pier 44 with more scrutiny. But um, we definitely uh, would, would and could and should make use of Pier 44 if, if the selectmen you know, decided in our favor because for one thing, right now, we have I know 17 I'm a, parking spaces here. Yeah, but I know I'm board meetings. Um, uh, we have the, this entire space, and you know, it's not that it's that cramped, but for the summer months, we have a cooking class that's going on on the other side of this uh, partition. So it's not really hampering us, but I noticed already a few families didn't realize they had to go to the front door. But normally in the winter months, we have this entire room, but we're sharing it with the, with the cooking class for children, which, you know. But it only allows us to do one program at a time. Right. It would never allow us to do, like the yoga program is expanding. 
right? Yeah. It wouldn't allow the growth the chair yoga. It wouldn't allow the support group with with additions. It wouldn't allow a lot of things. So you're talking about the Harvard community. The Harvard community. community. Yeah, right now we'll uh, take, take uh, the overrun. This place wouldn't allow it. Yeah. This place. I'm saying. We have no privacy here. I mean, you know. Yeah, obviously this place is no good. No, no. We know that. Yeah. Well, I, I will shut up after this, but one, one, what, two times I recall, we had the volunteer senior ladies who faithfully um, do the mailing of our newsletter. And they come and they collate and they fold and, and they have a little lunch and it's a day out for them. But two times the knitting class came while they were still here, maybe 12, 14, ladies working on the newspaper and they were cut we send out how many newsletters? Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand four hundred. So we have these ten, twelve ladies working on the newsletter and thirty knitters. And I mean I'll, and I was volunteering that afternoon so I know firsthand this place was like Grand Central Station and it was like it was crazy. It was chaos. Okay. So that kind of thing Florence is right, we can't have that wasn't an abnormal that wasn't scheduled, it happened that way. But we can't have two two programs going on at the same time. It's impossible. Okay. Uh, anything that? else on the topic? No. All right, we're just, we've got September coming. We've got, I'll talk to Patty about one and find out what their meeting's gonna be, and we'll have some questions answered about at least two pieces of property, hopefully. Uh, and then we'll just go from there. We'll keep fighting and marching forward. Fighting the good fight. Yeah, right. I can read the first read. We yeah. adjourn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye